Okay, Adam, so can you explain to me uh, what we're looking at right now? Uh, it, it is a vertical adjustment test uh, from uh, BIFMA 5.5. Uh, so this, this test uh, is, um, uh, is uh, designed to uh, verify the, fun the functioning of uh, vertical adjustment. Uh, normally, it's uh, like the, uh, a lot of modern tables, they, have, um, they can be adjusted with uh, electrical motors. Um, so the user can adjust the height, uh, like either for standing up or for sitting down. Uh, and yeah, so this test basically uh, uh, tests the, the adjustment mechanism uh, if, if it works uh, correctly. Uh, so we, what we're doing is uh, uh, we divide the, the whole travel of the table in four different parts. Uh, the lower 25%, then the 25 to 50%, 50 to 75%, and uh, the highest 75 to 100%. And uh, we test each part uh, at a thousand cycles. So basically we go up and down, but uh, since usually there's a duty cycle associated with the uh, adjustment mechanism, we do three cycles uh, and then we let the table rest um, for the for the basically the the duty cycle uh, that's uh, that's on the controller. Uh, so let's say if we do um, uh, if it takes uh, let's say 30 seconds uh, to do three cycles, uh, then we wait uh, we wait we, 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 did, we wait the time necessary to uh, to have the 10 percent 10 percent of motion uh, during the during the, the time. Uh, so, and after we started again, we do three cycles and then off we rest, we rest for, uh, um, uh, for the, um, the amount of time. We calculate basically so it, it comes to 10%. So you have a load? You uh, always leave the load there? Uh, for the first two uh, quartiles, they call them like the first two, uh, like from 0 to 25% and from 25 to 50%. Uh, we, uh, we put the load on the left side of the table. Uh, we center it uh, 12 inches uh, from uh, from the front and from the side of the table, and from the for the last uh, for the 50 to 75 percent and 75 to 100 percent uh, quartiles, uh, we do uh, we place it on the other side of the table on the on the right, okay, uh, at the same location pretty much. How do you control the uh, the travel distance? Uh, we have a, I saw a little magnetic uh, magnet here, and we have magnetic switches. And they're all, uh, they go into a, um, uh, like a, a microcontroller board. Uh, so we, we have a timer with that, that measures, uh, we can input a time and it will uh, activate the, the little uh, uh, um, pneumatic cylinders, uh, which will press on the, uh, on the buttons of the controller. This controller uh, is like a remote control for the table. Usually this is installed on the table itself. Okay. Uh, but for the, for the test, we take it off. Uh, uh, it's more practical to do a test okay, like that. So you don't you don't bypass the controller. You push on the actual button. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because it's uh, it's just uh, uh, it's just easier that way, and uh, uh, we're not interfering with anything uh, with all the electronics of the. Uh, yeah, it's of a the much table. better simulation. Sorry. It's a much better simulation that way. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Agree, if I were yeah. an auditor, I'd be impressed. That's good, Adam. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> So it counts the number of cycles. Yeah, yeah. We can uh, with the controller. We we uh, there's a counter, and we check it like just for like for the top of these. Uh, we uh, uh, at the beginning of the test we check uh, with the timer in to to uh, see the if that duty cycle is correct. If the uh, if the time off you know corresponds to what we want, uh, we just make sure it's uh, it's all. And uh, after that it's it's uh, it stays the same for the for the rest of the uh, of the rest of the test. Okay, that's we, good. we check it again on the next quartile. Whenever we change, uh, we, we readjust the switches. We check the timing again uh, to, make, to make sure it's still good. Okay, so right now the actuators are not moving because it's, it's uh, you program the duty cycle in the controller. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so there's a, there's a time. Uh, it's, uh, the, the, the calculation is that whatever time, at, the, at, at first I measure the time to do three cycles. And uh, for this particular table, I just multiply that time uh, by nine, and it will give me the the time necessary to rest. Okay. And um, how do you get the, the, the duty cycle? Uh, usually, uh, well, it's the Bifma says um, 
the, the standard says uh, the, the manufacturer should provide it. If, if not, they give you a standard duty cycle. Uh, but what we do is usually we look at the controller. Usually we don't, the, uh, the manufacturer doesn't tell us, but I, I, we look at the controller's um, spec sheet on the label. And uh, that's, that's usually what we use for, um, uh, for the, uh, un unless we, we get told something else by the manufacturer of the table. Uh, but oftentimes the controller and the manufacturer is not one and the same. Uh, and we don't get the information from the manufacturer. Uh, so we just, uh, we just uh, read it all from the label, controller's label, and we use that, um, and we use that uh, time to, that duty cycle basic to, um, uh, to, uh, to do the test. Okay. And uh, is that, do you record the duty cycle as well in the, uh, in the, in the logbook? Uh, yes, we, we write it down. Uh, I, I, what I do is uh, I time the, uh, for every quartile, I would time the on, the on time, how long it takes to do three cycles. And I would time the, um, the off time. Okay. Uh, so I will have two, uh, I will log, log into the log, the two measurements of the time. And uh, uh, based on that, I will calculate the duty cycle and make sure it's, uh, it's, it's uh, at, at, at the value or slightly inferior to, uh, to whatever is uh, on the controller. So, so well, if you're aiming at 10%, uh, you know, we, uh, it could be 9.8 or 9.8 uh, 9 uh, or 9.7 or 9.9, and that would be okay. Uh, we just don't want to go over. Uh, what's the what's the um, the maximum duty cycle that the that it, that the it's recommended? Good. Okay, Adam. Thank you. Okay.